PC Linux OS is an OG Linux distribution that got started way back in 2003 as a simple repository of packages for Mandrake Linux, a popular enterprise Linux distribution from the early 2000s. You could probably compare it today to a PPA for Ubuntu or something like that. PC Linux OS was a bit like that, but for Mandrake and Mandriva Linux. After 2003, Techstar, the maintainer of PC Linux OS, forked Mandrake and started doing his own thing. According to a review he did a while ago, he decided to make his own independent Linux distro as an outlet for his crazy desire to package source code without having to deal with egos, arrogance, and politics. Now being a descendant of Mandriva, it uses the same style of installer and control panel for configuring lower level things in the distribution, not at all unsimilar to Yast from the OpenSUSE distribution. Unlike OpenMandriva and Magia, PC Linux OS isn't meant to be a successor of the original Mandrake or Mandriva Linux distributions, but is probably a bit more like Solus in that it includes tools from other distributions but is very much its own thing. For example, Mandriva-based Linux distros use RPM packages and management tools like URPMI, but PC Linux OS, well, it still uses RPM packages, but manages them with apt. Yep, you heard that right. More on that in just a little bit. The PC Linux OS Control Center is basically a fork of DRACConf from Mandriva and Magia, and is functionally comparable to Yast on SUSE Linux. It's the special sauce of the distribution, and here you can configure things like network and sharing, you can inspect your system logs and hardware, or manage your bootloader or display manager. It's obviously not native GTK or Qt, but it's pretty slick and it gives you easy access to some of the underhood features of the distro. PC Linux OS comes in a few different flavors, but the three desktops we'll be looking at here are KDE, XFCE and Mate, with KDE technically being the OG flagship. Styling-wise, XFCE and Mate looked really good, and I really like the icon sets on them. I personally found the Mate flavor to be the most polished and professional of the three, with XFCE being a close second. It feels somehow vintage and fresh at the same time. The color scheme looks good, the fonts are nice to look at. But on the KDE side of the house, it's just not good. A part of this might be due to the weird scaling that KDE does inside of the VM, but in my opinion, nothing about the desktop just looks as good here as the Mate or XFCE counterparts. The icons look pretty lame, the color scheme is just too dark, and KDE is using the Ubuntu font here. Gecko Linux does this too, and in my opinion, KDE just looks a little weird with that font. Mate and XFCE use the regular old Sans font, and it looks good. Fits in with the OG aesthetic, and I think that that's what they're aiming for here. Now out of the three desktops, KDE had the largest install size at 7.6 gigabytes, but with a respectable idle memory usage at 600 megabytes. Mate had a footprint of about 7.1 gigabytes installed, but the highest memory usage with over 700 megabytes. The performance across each of the desktops was fluent and quick, but there's not really a lot of eye candy here in the way of animations and compositing, really. Now getting back to the RPM and apt thing, it's a strange fork or possibly old version of the apt tooling, and it doesn't always work the way you might expect. Like, for example, there's no apt search, but instead apt cache search, which is the old way of doing it. The software selection in the repos is actually quite comprehensive and up to date. For example, they have the very latest version of Lutris in here. But curiously, Steam isn't available, and from what I've read, Wine can be a little dicey to get working too. There's no SnapD support, not even in the repos. But Flatpak is in there, and you can install Steam and play games that way too, including Windows games with Proton. And the performance in the game seemed pretty alright even inside this little VM. So PC Linux OS was really innovative for its time, but in today's age, it's just kind of weird. 
The workflow is very old school with Mate and XFCE not even having application searches built into their start menus. They all feature a little updater applet, but there's no software store and the apt front end is synaptic even on KDE. Another quirky thing about PC Linux OS is that there's no sudo. You switch to the root user if you want to do anything like install apps. During the installer, I set up the root account with no password, and that means I can install stuff and do generally rooty things without being prompted for a password. Now, functionally speaking, the distro would work just fine as a daily driver. It handles media just fine with all of the codecs, media players, and sane defaults. It handles all of the archive formats without troubles, and Samba networking seemed to be configured right out of the box, so your file sharing is there. In terms of community support for such an old school distro like this, well, you might just be surprised, but the official forum is hopping. Even the welcome center portion of the forum is active with people just making posts that say, hello from Ohio or hello from Adelaide. I'm fairly confident from this that if you ran into an issue with your PC Linux OS install, you could come here or the wiki that they also have and get some sort of answer without getting your head torn off. Now PC Linux OS has a pretty rich history and I only scratched the surface of it at the beginning of this delve. If you want me to use my paws and dig a little bit deeper on the subject, maybe we could do a video on the history of PC Linux OS or distros like that. It's a really curious Linux distribution that you may not have even known about until this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more traditional episodes like this one. Appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.